how do you do the manufacturing of these parental products right now there are different different steps that are involved when you do the manufacturing of this parental products the first step is manufacturing and distribution of water for injection as i told you water for injection is the uh, uh, vehicle that is used not only for manufacturing but also for cleaning so a large amount of water for injection is required when you are doing the manufacturing okay the next uh, the next step that so first you do is first you manufacture this water for injection and then you store it and uh, then you use it further the next step that is involved in production is cleaning of equipment and containers it is a very important step the next step that is required is actual compounding that is actual preparation of the ingredient that is mixing of the ingredients either you prepare a solution or you are going to prepare it in the form of dry powders okay so these are the two formulation by in which it has been usually prepared that is solution or dry powder so what you carry out is the mixing of the ingredients in order to prepare a solution or in order to prepare a dry powder then what you carry out is the filtration of the solution so if you have prepared the filter solution then you carry out the filtration of the solution uh, the next step after filtration you carry out is filling uh, either in the ampules or in the vials or in the uh, large uh, uh, volume uh, uh, containers okay so you fill it and after filling you you carry out the sealing of the product right and finally you carry out the sterilization of the product that has been done so these are the different different steps that have been involved in the manufacturing of your parental products let us go to the first step that is manufacturing storage and distribution of your water for injection right before we carry out any step now whether it is uh, this is true for tablets also this is true for capsules also this is true for any formulation before we carry out the manufacturing the first thing that you determine a, or first thing that you do in in your uh, in your uh, premises in your factory premises is you do the raw material testing so whatever raw material ha has been received by that raw material whether quality or not it should be determined by your quality control department one this on your material okay that is your active ingredient okay that is your api and along with that your excipient whatever excipients that you are going to add right api and the excipients when they say that it is of good quality then and then only you are going to use it in the formulation in case of in case of parenters the you are going to manufacture this water for injection this water for injection is also a excipient it's also a important vehicle isn't it this also should be passed by your quality control department you yourself should also carry out the testing of this water for injection and once satisfied this water whether you have conductivity methods you can uh, prepare a uh, um, uh, agno3 solution okay and that any agno3 solution you can take up uh, that solution can be prepared by you it can be it can be stored by you and you can just take water and just put that agno3 solution inside water and see if there is some turbidity that will give you the uh, give you the idea whether chlorine is present or not that will further give you an idea whether uh, the uh, These are the small, small tests, uh, uh, quick tests that you are going to carry out in order to determine your water is of good quality or not. At the same time, the quality control department is also going to uh, uh, check, as I told you, your API. They are going to check your excipient. They are going to check your water for injection. And once they have passed all the ingredients, then and then only you are going to start the manufacturing. As I told you, this is not true for uh, not true only for your uh, parental preparation. But this step of raw material testing should be carried out as a first step for each and every formulation, right? So once the raw material has been passed, then what you have to start is with the first step that is manufacturing of your water for injection. Now, as I told you, water for injection is being manufactured either by distillation or by reverse osmosis process. So you start with the manufacturing of water for injection. Before you start with the water, before you start with the distillation or the reverse osmosis process, 
first 40 days, many a times the water uh, that has been received may be groundwater. Okay, so you carry out the pre pre purification. So purification of your water can be carried out uh, by you can use uh, chemical softening method, you can use deionizing method, you can use filtration method, and by using this method, you can using this uh, different methods, you are going to first uh, carry out the pre purification of your feed water. Okay, then you should have an efficient baffle system. Okay. So, in order to minimize the entrainment, so whatever the entrainments are, whatever are the, you have to remove the dissolved gases that are present. For example, ammonia may be present. So, these dissolved gases can be uh, uh, removed with the help of heating. Okay, so you preheat the feed water. So, whatever feed water you have received, you are going to use chemical softening, deionizing, filtration, you are going to remove the dissolved gases by heating it, right? And then one more thing that you have to uh, take care is that all the surfaces, okay, that come in contact with the vapor and condense it, right? So you are carrying out the condensation, you are carrying out distillation, you are carrying out condensation, isn't it? After distillation, you are going to carry out condensation. Your vapors are going to come in contact with the surfaces, isn't it? So uh, when you are heating it, so whatever surfaces your water is going to come in contact with, maybe the vapors, maybe the condensate. All should be of only of stainless steel, either of stainless steel or they should be of borosilicate gas. Okay. If they are not of borosilicate glass or if they are not of stainless steel, then what is going to happen? Inside the water is your undissolved and or dissolved impurities may come inside it. Right. Once these all steps are carried out, once the water for injection is prepared by distillation and reverse osmosis method, so you carry out first all these steps, then you carry out the distillation step, then you carry out the reverse osmosis steps, okay, or or uh, one of them, and then what you do is then you test the quality by the QA and QC department. They test the quality of this water for injection, and they then pass the water for injection, and then they can be further used for manufacturing, okay. Now, uh, the next step that is being carried out after preparation of water for injection is the cleaning of equipment and containers. Okay. Please remember you are manufacturing these sterile products, isn't it? Hence, the cleanliness of the equipment and the containers, okay, should be of the highest standards. Right. So, the equipment and condensers, uh, containers that are used, okay, should be thoroughly cleaned. There should be no gap that should be left open, okay, in case of cleaning of equipment and containers. More so when you are prepare, uh, more so when you are doing a parental preparation, okay, that you have to remember. Now, uh, how do you clean it? Usually, it is cleaned with the help of detergent, right? So, use detergent. The first step is you use detergent in order to clean it. After using the detergent, right, then what you are going to do is you are again going to rinse it with your water for injection. You are going to clean it with your water for injection. The next step after using of detergent, the next step that you carry out is after removing of, of detergent, you are, the next step that you are going to carry out is you are going to treat it with the steam. So when you treat it with the steam, when you heat it with the, uh, when you clean it with the steam, then what happens is whatever are the solid residues that are remaining after the use of detergent, okay? If there is something that is remaining, that also gets loosened up. After using detergent, after using steam, the next thing that you are going to carry out is you are going to carry out the rinsing. As I told you earlier, water for injection is used for the final rinsing of your product, okay, of your equipment or your container. So whatever equipment that you are using, that all that should also be clean. If you are using Container, for example, ampules, if you are using vials, if you are using any other container for packing, those also should be cleaned, right? section. Okay, that time you will be seeing how each and every ampule that has been filled is been cleaned first. Okay, it is rinsed first. Okay, and then only the product is incorporated into it. Okay, so whatever container, as I told you, whatever container is there, whatever equipment is there, that should be then rinsed with your 
uh, water for injection. Now, uh, if there are products, uh, now there are there are equipments, there are containers, okay, where only one type of product is being manufactured, okay, only one type of injectable is manufactured. The uh, the container is specifically devoted only to the manufacturing of that product, okay. In such a case, whereby no other product is going to come in contact with that container, in that case, okay, your cleaning problems are going to be minimized. You don't have to take that much of care in order to clean. Uh, uh, this is about the equipment containers. Now, how do you do the uh, Okay, if it is a new equipment, carry out the cleaning procedure usually if it's new if the material is new in that case for example ampules they are uh, we don't use a used ampule isn't it wire so the new container that is coming your product is coming no use of detergent this step can be removed Eliminated is because again, uh, if you are using detergent, then then this decision the CDU. So what you do is you just have to uh, uh, eliminate the detergent step, and you can go for so you can please. Once you have rinse it with water for injection, what you are going to So you will get it, and then yes. Oh, sir, your voice is breaking a little bit. Is it still? Uh, it's, it's breaking still, sir. Uh, now, now it's better, sir. Yeah, it's 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 better now. No, it's better now, sir. Uh, sir, it's yeah. it's breaking now, sir. Uh, yes, sir, it's okay now. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, it's okay. clean with water for injection inside the ampule after rinsing with water for injection that water is blown out okay sterilized by placing in the uh, by, by placing in the clean stainless steel boxes then you can sterilize the container or they can be also sterilized with the help of radiation they can be also be uh, sterilized with the help of hot air okay so sterilization of these containers are being carried out and then these containers are used for filling of the product okay going ahead now how do you carry out and plastic components now cleaning yes sir you are uh, audible okay yes sir it's not breaking it is not breaking now no uh, no sir but uh, like for uh, one two or second it breaks in between actually not not much the internet connectivity is there actually okay no not much actually but for like one or two seconds okay fine 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 
I will try to uh, be a little bit. Yeah. Now the next step is, you know, cleaning of the rubber and plastic. The next cleaning that we carry out is the cleaning of the rubber and the plastic uh, components. The rubber and the plastic components are usually the rubber closures are there. That is the rubber component that has been uh, present. It is usually washed by the mechanical agitation method. Thereby, you take all these uh, rubber components and you put it in a tank of hot detergent solution. Usually, hot detergent solution that has been used is 0.5% sodium pyrophosphate. So, you prepare a solution, 0 .5 solution, of, solution of sodium pyrophosphate. You put it in the tank, you heat it a little bit, and in that, you put your rubber closure. And what you do is you do the mechanical agitation. Okay. And then, further, what you are going to do is after removal from that, after removal from the detergent, final raising as, as you water for injection. So that you very rarely also uh, closures are also in order to remove some of the soil that are present inside the closure. So you can also do the autoclaving of your. Uh, Right. Right. Which are going to be used in the product. Right. So what is going to happen if they are already saturated, then they are not going to absorb the components that are present inside your container. Otherwise, what is going to happen, whatever components are present inside the container, this closure can absorb the components of the container. Hence, what you do is, you initially only you saturate it, right? This container is usually saturated. So, as it is saturated, then it is not going to absorb the content, right? Now, this is how this saturation is done, this done is by storing these closures, okay? inside the antiseptic solution for a long period of time. So whatever uh, the antiseptic solution is there in that antiseptic solution, okay, you are going to put your closure inside it and you are going to store it for a long period of time. Because what happen, they are going to become saturated with the antiseptic solution and they are not going to absorb the contents that are present inside the uh, container, right? Uh, after cleaning of equipment, the next step that you carry out is sterilization of the equipment. So, whatever equipments have been cleaned by you, the uh, the equipments, it may be the uh, uh, it may be the stirrers, it may be the uh, whatever whatever uh, things that are going to come in contact with the formulation. Okay, it may be the container, it may be the closures. Okay, so whatever things you have cleaned now, they all should be sterilized. All the equipment should be sterilized. Okay before you actually go for the compounding of your preparation okay so next step that you carry out is compounding compounding is nothing but now you are going to actually carry out the mixing of your products okay so now uh, and how do you prepare either either the as i told you the formulations i either they are solution or they are suspension okay or they are uh, uh, going to be your uh, uh, what you call the dry powder so these are the usual formulations uh, which are been prepared by you. So, where do you prepare it? You are going to prepare it in the tanks, isn't it? They are prepared in the tanks. So, whatever tanks you are going to prepare them, okay, wherever the ingredients are going to be mixed, as we have said that it should be thoroughly clean, okay, so that there is no chemical or no pyrogenic contamination that is present inside it. Once you have seen that the tanks are very, very clean, then you should carry out the compounding of your preparation, okay. So, the compounding should be carried out in a very clean environment, okay. Uh, acidic condition as such may not be required over there, but at least it should be a very clean condition. So, proper cleaning should be carried out as, as we have mentioned earlier. Another, another important factor that you are going to consider uh, while compounding of the product apart from cleaning is going to be the accuracy of compounding, okay. And the next factor that you are going to consider is the order of mixing. So, the quantity of the ingredients, they are very, very important when you are compounding the preparation, okay, when you are preparing the preparation. And the second is how, in which order you are going to mix the ingredients. That is also important, that also we are going to take place.
the next important thing that you are going to pay attention to is you know to to uh, maintain the homogeneity of the solution the solution whatever you are going to prepare should be homogeneous in nature the solution it may be the suspension it may be the mixtures they all should be very very homogeneous in mixture uh, homogeneous in nature right the proper stirring etc should be carried out proper condition should be maintained more so when you are preparing a suspension then the particle size okay becomes very very important the particle size should be as low as possible so uh, using of colloidal mill etc which will reduce the particle size uh, using ball mill earlier uh, and uh, uh, reducing the particle size milling your products milling all your ingredients before uh, uh, you compound it and after compounding it after the suspension has been formed after compounding it okay reducing the particle size becomes very very important right particle size uh, reduction not only helps in you know maintaining the stability of a uh, of your suspension as you very 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 well know you know that uh, stability of suspension is very important right so particle size plays a, plays a very important role over here you have already studied stokes law etc for that right so uh, so you it is not only important from that point of view but it is also uh, important from the point of view of syringeability that the particles should pass through the needles when they are being removed from the uh, formulation okay when you are taking it inside that time also and when you are putting it inside the patient that formulation inside the patient that is nothing but syringeability so that syringeability is very very important right if the particle size are bigger then there are chances that it may clog your needle that is the reason why the suspension should be properly milled and the particle size should be as low as possible whenever you are preparing a uh, from a parental product okay that is in the suspension form after compounding of the product the next step that you carry out is the filtration of the solution now uh, objective of uh, filtration or you can say objective of clarification or objective of sterilization is a little bit different from each other okay now filtration or clarification okay they basically remove the particle size up to 3 micrometer size okay that has been removed okay uh, why did i say this is because a product may be may be sterile in nature but at the same time it may be containing some uh impurities of uh, it may be some uh, containing some particulate impurities so a sterile product may also contain some particulate impurities hence filtration or clarification which you also call it as polishing is very very important because filtration and clarification they basically remove the particles up to 3 micrometer size and above right whereas sterilization it removes the particles up to 0.3 micrometer uh, uh, is been removed okay so all the microorganisms what the all the spores they are removed because of sterilization whereas filtration you also you also use uh, st uh you use of for sterilization also you can use filtration method but here we are we are talking about the different filtration methods right so your solution should be devoid of any particulate impurity that particulate impurity is removed from the solution with the help of filtration so different different uh, types of filters can be used you can use uh, filters that are made up of materials such as sintered glass you have unglazed porcelain okay that is sintered uh, ceramics you can have filters made up of asbestos glass you have uh, filters made up of stainless steel by material okay or you can also have membrane filters isn't it the membranes which are made up of cellulose isn't it cellulosic membrane that is made up of cellulose ester it may be uh, acetate or nitrate okay you have filters that are made up of pvc and also you have silver uh, filters that are made up of silvers okay so different different materials are been used in order to prepare your filters now you can also carry out as i told you uh, after filtration you can also carry out this sterile filtration right now sterile filtration what does it remove it removes particles up to 0 0.3 micrometer okay this much particles can be removed now uh, the solution must be protected please remember after sterile filtration when you carry out the sterile filtration so you have carried out filtration you have carried out sterile filtration after carrying out the sterile filtration now you have to protect your solution whatever is being there 
from the environmental contaminants. So now it should not come in contact with the environment. So after filtration, what you're going to do is you're going to seal your container in the final container. And then you're going to take it directly for filling. Right, got it? Now the mess method is what? It is ordered to, is to collect the filtrate in a container in a closed system. And from there, from this closed system, so wherever you have collected it, in that closed system, from that closed system, it should be transferred to the collecting vessel. Okay, through a sterile piping. So now whenever you are going to transfer this material, okay, so the filtrate first should be connect, uh, uh, collected in a closed system. And when you are transferring this from the closed system anywhere else, okay, it should always be through a sterile piping. That care you have to take, right? Now, apart from that, you should have a secondary inline filter. So, inline filters are what? They are filters which are present inside the pipeline. So, you can have filters which are present inside the pipeline. You can have filters which are present, you know, uh, if you are transferring from one container, you are transferring to other container, right? From here, you are transferring the material to other container. It itself is filtered material. This is a clean, clarified material. Then also, when you are transferring it at the end of this, Okay, if you should have a filtration system either which are known as inline filters. They are secondary inline filters which can be present and they can be present near the outlet, right? And from here, the material should then be collected. And from here, if you are directly putting it into the filling unit, we are not going to study the filling. Then at the end also, you should have a filter whereby when the product goes finally inside the container, it is going to be very clear in nature. So finally, in this way, you carry out the filtration of the solution.